Hello, my name's Liz Curtis, and if die cutting is new to you, then I'm going to show you some little bit of die cutting today to get you uh, to get you going on it. So first of all, I'm going to use a flourish die. It's really, really intricate and beautiful, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to cut. So first of all, I need to put it on my base plate, and then I need to put my cardstock with right side down facing the die. So the cutting edge of the die is facing me. The right side of the card is facing down onto the die. And with the pressure of the machine, the grand calibre, whichever machine you have, that'll actually cut the die. It's as easy as that. So I'm just going to run that through. And just so it's uh, easy for me, and if you're sitting down at home, this is easy for you too, you can just bring it back. You don't have to lean over the table to, to pick up your die. So there we go. And there's my die, beautifully cut. So I'll just move the boards out of the way. So there, look, see how easy it's released from the die? Then all we need to do now is use a pokey tool to actually release it. Now on the back of the dies, they have little release holes. Some of them are for the waste pieces and some are to actually release the die cut from the die. So I know this particular hole here will lift that little flower up. So all I'm going to do is lift that little piece up and then just pull it away from the actual die. So you can see how beautifully it just falls away. Sometimes you can do a little tap, so you could tap that flat side down onto your worktop and that will, will release the die and, and the little pieces as well. So we've got some pieces actually left in the die there. So using the actual little pokey tool, we can actually poke those out and keep our dies nice and tidy and clean and ready for the next time we use them. So just bring those out. And sometimes the little piece, pieces that are waste, you can actually use on other projects, especially some of the lovely flourishy ones. And we'll just pop those to one side. And there we have a lovely clean die. So here's the actual die cut. Um, and I've actually cut this out of white textured cardstock. It's about mm, maybe 250 GSM cardstock, so it's about average. It'll go up to 300, 350, and it'll go down to 120 beautifully. And it'll still hold the shape of the die cut. Really, really super. So look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. Very, very intricate. But because of the beveled edge, and when you do when you do, do a die cut, you always get a beveled edge to it. It gives it strength, so it holds its shape beautifully. Now that flourish on its own would go really lovely underneath a topper. And I've got one here. I've got a topper and some layers already. So if we can assume that we're going to layer that on top of there, I've got a beautiful little topper. We'll pop that to the side. And then my beautiful flourish can either go over the top, you can position it so you can still read the writing, or you could pop it underneath. So this is where your creativity, it's all down to you and what, you, what sort of effects you want to achieve. So you could lift that little petal up there and just pop that over the top. Even there you could have that little swirl coming in over the um, top of your topper there, and that just gives it a lovely finishing touch. The other thing you can do if you have any distress inks or, or any little chalky inks is to actually add some colour to that die cut. And if I bring my mat over, I'll show you what I mean. So if you have either a glass mat or one of these craft um, mats here, then you can start using your inks. Now I've got a beautiful light pink here. And what you can do is just pick up the colour of the ink and pop it onto just perhaps the petal part, if you wish. You could also use your, your marker pens, your, your crayons, your, even your aqua pens would be fine using this, as long as you don't saturate the card. So there we go, you can see it just gives a lovely little finishing touch, just adds a little bit more dimension to your die cut. And there the die is now coming alive, because you're adding a little bit of interest, a little bit of inking. And you could leave it at that, that's all it needs. But there's something else we can do with this die cut. We can actually make this into a beautiful, beautiful background. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. So I'll pop that one to one side. So a little bit earlier today, I cut some dies for you. And here we have a seven and a half inch square piece of textured card. It's the same card that I used for cutting out the dies. And here are all the die cuts. 
Now I've purposely cut it seven and a half inches square because actually when I trim this down I want this to be a seven inch square. So I would need to take quarter of an inch off each side and I'll show you the reason why. So what we're going to do, we're going to pop these on here and just lay them down. So I've cut, I think there's five, you could have six, seven, however many you wish and you need to just fill the area up with your die cuts. Bearing in mind you're going to have a topper going over the top of this so you don't need to perhaps concentrate so much on the middle of your cardstock but just perhaps the outside edges. I'll just pop that one there. And that actually now makes the, the base to our background. So you can see how that's going to work. Now what I would do now is that I'd use my, my all-purpose glue and I would actually stick all those down and that would create my lovely, lovely flat background. And then what I would do is that I would run it through my machine again between two pieces of copy paper and that then really bonds the two together and makes a lovely flat background. And I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. So I'll pop this one to one side and bring in the one that I made earlier. And here we are. So you can see I've actually added more. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven die cuts here. And that's made the most beautiful background. You can see how well it works. So that we could leave it at that with the, just the white. But I think we're going to be colouring this in pink just to bring everything together. So what I need to do now is actually trim round the edges of this to make this seven and a quarter. And because everything is actually cut to size, um, we've got the flourishes going over the edge, then by trimming this away, we have a lovely, lovely, neat edge. So I'll do that now with my scissors. Ideally, you could use a guillotine, you could use a paper trimmer, whatever you have to hand. But today, I'm going to use my scissors. And all we're going to do is cut about a quarter of an inch off the edge. And that brings my card base, my background card, down to a seven inch square, which is absolutely perfect for my card. The other thing it does is neaten all the edges of not only the card, the background card, but all the edges of the flourish. You don't need to worry about trimming those away. This is the easiest thing to do to make your card neat. So here we go with the last edge now. And you can see it's even though there's two layers of card there, very, very easy to cut through. So now you can see the background. And doesn't that look amazing? So we're still, if you remember, we're just using that one die. We've created a flourish to go underneath a topper, and now we've created a background. How easy is that? But just to bring it to life again, we're going to put some ink on it. And it's the same technique as you'd use in, in your inking if you have got some inks. Um, if not, you could just leave it absolutely plain. Or, if you wish, you could get your pens on this again and actually use your pens to colour in round the edges. Maybe even a gold pen would look lovely. Anything that you have in your stash you can use. But this is just an extra different way of using just that one die and bringing your cards to life. And you'll get so much satisfaction and pleasure from doing this. And I think when you give this to somebody, they'll be very, very curious as to how, you, how you got this background made. So there we are. I've done a little bit. You can see the effect of that. But I'd like to show you the finished background. So I'm going to pop this to one side and bring that in. There we go. So this is the finished background. So you can see I've picked out the colour on the back here to complement my ink and that lays on the card like this. This is matting and layering. This is what it's all about. Bringing out the colours, bringing, getting, getting your dyes to be uh, really, really useful for you. So you can see now how that's going to look. So if I bring the topper in that we looked at before, we can lay that down. I've used some nice pretty paper there. There's the matching layer there and there's my sentiment. I'm just offsetting that because I'm going to use that flourish that we had earlier on and I think I rather liked it how we had it before where the little curly bit, <laughs> the flourishy part, just kiss cut the edge of the topper. So I'm just going to pop that in there like that. So that one goes over the top like that. That goes underneath and there it all lays together beautifully. 
Isn't that gorgeous? And just to finish it off, we've got a bow. So that brings everything together. So just to summarize, I used a beautiful flourish die, just the one die. And from that, we created a beautiful embellishment to go underneath my topper. I'll turn that around so you can see. That's what we made earlier. Just that beautiful flourish there. So what I did then was I made a background and I cut seven of those flourishes and attached them to my card base. A little bit of ink just to bring out the colour of all the designs so it brings it all together. And when we put all those elements together, so there's our matting and layering. There's our topper. There we go. And we always have to have a bow to finish it off. So one die cut, that's all you need to make that beautiful card.